Winston. Go get him. You want this? Come Winston, here. Come on. Oh, that's a good boy. Yeah, let's do one more. Sit. Come here. Come here. Winston, come here. Come here. Come on. Hey. Sit down. Sit. Stay. Ah. Stay. Stay. Come here. Oh, that's a good boy right there. Mm-hmm. All right, this is what an eight inch tire on a 10 inch wheel looks like. Got a little bit of stretch going out to each side to make sure we get optimum contact on the track. But yes, yeah, so we are going down in tire size. This is a 26 by eight for the eighth mile Riley radio class. We're gonna be running at sick week. These are actually the wheels I'm gonna be running on the street, but I'm gonna change out the tire and run the double beadlock billet specialties that I got with this tire. This is the comparison side by side, the eight inch versus the 275. How many inches is a 275 wide? This is a 28 by 10 and a half, but yep. they actually measure like 11.3, okay. almost 11 and a half. This is a 26, eight and a half. Ooh. Ooh, sporty tire right here though. Sporty. Bad mamma jamma. James has been, you said four or five yeah. on this it's, tire. It's a, it's a bad tire right here. All right, all right. It's the same compound as this, it's just in a sporty version. Yep, yep. You gotta be on your stuff to get that thing to go. Yeah, we're gonna turn her way down and just start creeping up on her yeah. tonight and see how she does. You won't slow down, I can guarantee you that. No? No, you'll get it figured out on that tire and it'll go just as fast on that tire as that Really? Yeah. Bang, let's do this. All right guys, we're about to make the first rip on that small tire 235. And uh, we got her turned down quite a bit, got that new torque converter in here. We're leaving on about 3,800 RPM and five pounds of boost. So we're gonna do a big smoky burnout just to get these fresh tires broken in a little see how she does we're gonna do an eighth mile head guys i later found out that i screwed up i left my overdrive unit on when i left the line on this pass and a second one and absolutely fried the rig but hey you live and learn we're getting a new one from gear vendor and we're going to keep pushing forward dang it i'm out here embarrassing myself a little bit but it's all right we're here we're ironing out all the issues on my last pass going up to do a burnout, these TBM brakes are so good, have so much clamping force in the rear, and since I don't have line lock, I wasn't doing a burnout, it was a little bit embarrassing, so I'm gonna try a different strategy when I go up to the line, I'm just gonna do a rolling burnout before I get line lock installed, because TBM makes a super cool solenoid for that, so make sure you go check it out on their website. But we put new spark plugs in it, because it's been breaking up a little bit, we don't know if it's a bad O2 sensor, if it's bad spark plugs, but either way, I'm switching out the O2 sensor this weekend when I'm installing the Dominator and switching to an NTK. Right now I've been running the old Bosch one that the car came with. So a little bit outdated stuff that just needs updating, but we're here, that's why we're here. We got two months before sick week, so I'm glad we're not rushing a week before, but it seems like the new converter is doing really well. No, it might be a battle to get to six. Oh. Well, big come up here, everybody. We got the Holly Dominator, gonna have all the input and output controls. You do have to change your O2 sensor from a Bosch to an NTK when switching to a Dominator. So we gotta get that switched out. But other than that, the harness is just plug and play. All you have to do for your main harness is unplug these two connections down here and those plug straight into the Dominator. Don't mind all this, I'm getting it cleaned up. It's pretty ugly, but hey, it's coming along. It's come a long way. So we're gonna get this old Terminator out of here, get the Dominator put in and see how she fits. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a Terminator X to a Dominator, quite a bit larger, quite a bit heavier. However, 
looking at the connections, you have your 12 volt supply here with your two main harness connectors, but the dominator has your main harness connectors as well as four that are for inputs and outputs. There's a lot more input output capability for the dominator. I was also truly blown away by how easy it was to switch over from a terminator to a dominator. I basically only unplugged my wiring harness and replugged it back into the dominator as well as a 12 volt supply. Now I did have to spend some time wiring some new inputs and outputs to like the right bl sensor block I just showed you, as well as a couple other things on the car that I wanted to get absolutely dialed. But this process was super easy, even mounted in the exact same spot as the old Terminator was. Like I said, ignore all this stuff. I got a new harness coming, but there she is. I decided to use the J4 connector. I still have to clean all this up and loom it and et cetera, et cetera. But there she is, baby. There's my Dominator. Also, just hung up this banner. Got to rep them. Appreciate you guys. They're doing a lot for this car over here. Don't mind that mess. It's a working man's garage. All right, I gotta say, now that the car is back at home, I was absolutely embarrassing myself with these new TBM brakes because they have so much clamping force in their rear that when I tried to do a burnout, they weren't spinning. They get so much clamping force. I mean, the TBMs distribute it all the way to the back so that when you get on the brakes, since you have all your meats in the rear, that's where it slows you down. Traditionally on cars, most of the braking force is up front, but that's where TBM steps it up and gets all that braking force into the back. So. When you're doing a burnout with these enhanced brakes, you gotta run a line lock. So I just installed a line lock on the car. We're gonna go and test it out. I also wanna do some testing on the two-step as well and then getting on the trans brake. I wanna see what kind of boost it's building with the boost controller as well as my bump in. I've never had a bump in on this car, but I now have it set up on the car with pulse with modulation through the Holly Dominator. And what that allow me to do, instead of cars like jolting into the starting lane, this will slowly creep forward. So let's go see what we can get figured out on this thing. Okay, here is the new TBM line lock unit. I basically plumbed it straight out of the outlet out of the master cylinder that goes to the front brakes. Moving around to the inside of the car. Don't mind all this, this is a little messy. But here's the Holly Dominator. My new wiring harness is coming, so just ignore all this stuff that's hanging. But I cleaned up this quite a bit. Still more cleanup to come. Got the new dash that I'm waiting on a harness for to get that wired up. So I'm still using a little four inch ripper, but let's go do some testing. Okay, after two days of wiring, it is time to start this thing up and it's not the Dominator's fault. I've just been refining things, making them cleaner. Got the tune switched over, got the Dominator all hooked up. So we got to do a TPS auto set, which is basically where you're telling the computer where the throttle's wide open and not and then we'll get her turned over. Here's my old O2 sensor. I think it was time for a new one. This one was, has some miles on it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is test the line lock. I have the rev limiter on the line lock setting set at about 5,000 RPM. If everything goes to plan, when I hold down the line lock button on the steering wheel, it's going to lock those front brakes, but still allow those rear ones to spin. I put some water under the rear tires. So let's see how this thing works. So a little bit after testing to recap that, the line lock definitely works. The only thing I ran into was I had to pump the brake a couple times before actually locking it in just to build up some extra fluid pressure. I was on really rough asphalt, so I probably won't have to do that in the burnout box at the track. It's a lot smoother concrete that you do burnouts on and there's a lot more water than I put down. And then I went ahead and tried the bump. The bump, for some reason, when I tap the button, it stays engaged for you know, more than a second. So I got to play with that a little bit more. The car just rolls forward. like could roll all the way through the beams. I don't know if I got to stay on the brake or set up some kind of timing so that it just tap, tap, or just hold it and it creeps a little bit slower. And then we have an issue with the reverse where I put it in reverse and the whole thing's like, kunk, 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 shaking like it's grabbing like the locking pin or something. I don't know. I got a couple issues to figure out. I also kind of screwed around on the street a little bit and got into it. It started to go lean. It's been having this lean issue which is really dangerous on these cars. I don't want to blow this motor up. 
and uh, it's it's got to be some kind of short or some tuning issue because when I'm wide open throttle, I, I'll see the air to fuel jump like as high as 14, 15. Obviously, I get out of it right away, but whew, I don't know. It just feels like it's breaking up when I'm under power, especially on pump gas. I really haven't had this much. Ex I really haven't had much time on this car with on the race setup with its current setup. So I need to get this tune off to tune them all, see what he thinks. I data log that whole thing we just did. So we'll see what he comes back with. So the reason why it was coming off the trans brake during the bump is because I have the drive shaft speed below five miles an hour on the, on the trans brake output. So as soon as it started to bump forward, then it basically shut the trans brake button off out. And that's really just a safety so that I don't hit the trans brake button while we're driving, but so I just need to increase this or take it off. All right, guys, I have a couple motion raceworks packages that I have got and I'm gonna open for you. That are some pretty big upgrades on the car. I'm getting a lot more into data logging because I like numbers and I like looking at the graphs and such. So I got a couple things on the way for this car that I think are gonna drastically improve my ability to monitor things more closely so that we can be faster. But uh, the first thing we got, we are switching over to a Holly Dominator. So that's pretty cool. So Motion Raceworks makes a steering column attachment for their six and their 12 and their four inch screens, I believe. So this is gonna be my mount for the 6.86 inch screen, I believe it is. Really cool product. It's all made out of aluminum. It fits right onto the steering column already made by Motion. And then another thing that we got in the mail today, which I'm really excited about, because this car's always had a Holly Terminator on it. So I haven't been able to data log other than more like four or five, no, I think it's four inputs on the Terminator. So I'm switching the Dominator so I can do more, but I have their drive shaft speed sensor kit, which is pretty cool, bounce right up to the 488 rear end and they make a bunch of different adapters for, depending on what rear end you're running in the car, obviously a dum-dum and a motion sticker. So we're gonna get right to it. I'm going to put this drive shaft speed sensor on the car. I've already got a little bit wired up. It only needs three wires. So I'm gonna kind of go in today about what that entails, get this thing set up and installed so that we can actually start making some rips and knowing how fast we're going. Because since we're gonna be running the eighth mile on a smaller tire, I know that Cleet, my brother, Garrett, he's had a lot of success with running traction control. And there's a couple different systems on the market, but Holly actually has one built into their Dominator and their HP. So another great reason for upgrading to the Dominator on this car, but we need the drive shaft speed in order to dial in that traction control. So we're gonna get this put in today. Should be a pretty easy, easy install because I already have the strange yoke on my 8.8 rear end. So Motion Raceworks makes this piece that goes on. You don't even have to take the yoke out. And I'll kind of show you that. And then they send you a drive shaft speed sensor and the bracket to put it on. Just so everyone knows, I am not sponsored by Motion Raceworks. I have pretty much every product they make on my car. I pay for them just like you guys do. I will be honest with you. I do get a family and friends discount. It's not as much as you think it is, but just like you guys, I'm spending my hard work, earnest money on this car and building it in my garage during the week after work. So I hope that's relatable to some of you guys. All right, while we're here, I also have a couple other things I'm gonna unbox because I'm super stoked about this. So stand by. Okay, I'm gonna insert this data log here. This was from my last pass that we did at Cletus and Cars when I was up against Kevin KSR, which you can see in one of my previous videos. Anyways, it flew through the converter. I mean, instantly leaving the line. So I called the boys up at Circle D and I'm like, hey, you know, I wanna make this thing tighter. So I sent it back to them and I said, hey, what about doing one of those bolt together? So this aluminum bolt together converter from Circle D is an absolute unit. It actually weighs about 12 to 15 pounds less than the version I had before, which I'm really excited about because we all know rotating mass, which actually spinning coming off the engine takes a lot of energy to rotate. So if you can reduce the amount of weight that you have to rotate, it's gonna considerably increase power. So if I can take 12 to 15 pounds right off the back of the motor, we're set. So it's got six pads. Before my converter only had three. This thing is freaking beautiful. Okay, I'm really excited about this, but first let's get the drive shaft speed sensor in 
and get that dash kit for the screen because that's going to be coming soon. And then I'm not sure what to do about the converter because I'm actually getting a Rife sensor kit for my power glide. It monitors line pressure and it also monitors converter pressure. So that only that, but you can hook up trans temp and another sensor to it. It's four sensors built into one little block. It's an absolute beautiful piece. So I've got something in store to really clean it up. I think I'm gonna do hard lines instead of doing like rubber AN. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys something that my transmission guy showed me, is that as far as converter spacing goes, you wanna have about an eighth of an inch from the flywheel all the way with the converter pushed in. So there should be about an eighth of an inch there. I measured it out to be about 140, okay? So 140 thou, an eighth of an inch is 125 thousand. So I need either a, a 15 thou shim but I called Steve at CRT and he said 140 should be completely fine. So all I have to do is bolt the converter straight to the flywheel. I don't need any shimming, but you don't wanna to have too much or too little because if you have too much, then it can cause a, the converter to leak. If it's too little, then it can wear on the pump and cause the pump to fail inside of the transmission or your thrust bearings inside of your, your engine on your crank. So. The spacing on that converter is really important. I have it all mocked in now. Like I said, I still have to pull this transmission back out again in order to, what do I have to do? Oh, I gotta put that rife sensor block in right here. So I'm gonna finish up that drive shaft speed sensor and keep cranking on this thing. Hopefully we can get it to the track soon. Let me show you guys what I did with this rife block. I'm pretty stoked about it. I did a bunch of hard lines. I used 3 16 brake lines and did some flared fittings to capture my line pressure coming out of here and then my converter pressure coming out of here. And then I also have my trans tap sensor. So all of this is in one block and this goes up in a harness to the dominator. All about that data acquisition, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so we've got my rear end housing here. As you can see, I've got a strange yoke on here and this drive shaft wheel this wheel that goes longer looks like this right it's got 16 teeth all the way around but it's actually split in half and held together by two i believe it's hex yep two hex threaded bolts in here and it's going to sit around this actual yoke on the back side of it so we're going to get this apart i am going to red loctite this drive shaft speed sensor in here, but right now I'm just gonna kind of rough everything in before I really cinch it down. See, I've already got my sensor wire fed down through the floor. It's on a Deutsch connector, it's three wires. It's gonna be fed either five volts or 12 volts. I can't remember, I think it's five. And then uh, you have your signal wire and then a ground. Now I'm not sure which way it's gonna face, if it's gonna be the two side towards the front of the car, or the two side towards the back of the car, because you can see it's kind of offset to one side. So I'm just gonna kind of mock everything up here before cinching her down. So here's the bracket I'm talking about. There's already a hole on the 488 rear housing right here. They've got this little plate here. that's gonna sit something like this or this. I'm not quite sure yet. You guys are kind of learning as I go here as well. But here's the drive shaft speed sensor. So I'm gonna put that on to that bracket. It comes with a little, a couple of resistors, depending on how you have it hooked up to your ECU, whether it be a stock computer or a Holly or fuel tech or whatever you're using. Holly's obviously the best because that's what I use. Once you have your drive shaft sensor, Installed correctly and the three wires ran to a 5 volt, a ground, and a sensor wire back to the the holly. You go ahead and add an input here. I did input, drive shaft speed, and then you click digital speed frequency. 
and and configure miles an hour units miles per hour you know you can do all your minimums and cautions and maxes but this is really important when you're using the motion kit pulses to average one pulses 16 or i'm sorry yep pulses 16 gear ratio of the car and then rear tire size and then that gets you an accurate drive shaft speed on your data all right, guys. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode. A little bit of mixed content from you. A little bit of a vlog going on from the past week. I got to get this tune sent over to Tune Mall because she is not running right. She's basically shutting off as soon as the O2 sensor warms up. But everything else seems to be working fine. I'm excited to get with it. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you in the next episode. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track, we're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a sonic hair except a tenth of the price so go get one they send you a new brush at every three months so you don't have to worry about it it's a great deal